book of Matthew, chapter number seven. And you have it say amen. 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 Very popular scripture amongst people that ain't even in the, in the house of God. They love to quote this scripture at folk that are in the house of God. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. Matthew 7, verse number 1 through verse number 6. Amen. Matthew 7, verse number 1 through verse number 6. It says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? And then thou shalt see clearly to cast out I mean, thou hypocrite, excuse me, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and you will see clearly cast the moat out of thy brother's eye. Amen. Give not that which is holy to dogs, and neither cast your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Amen. Amen. Quoting a lot of people of today's generation, judge not that you don't be judged. A lot of people tell us, Judge not, lest you be judged. Amen. I want to pull a few words, so a portion of one scripture out of Deuteronomy 24 and verse 7. And the reason why I'm doing it is because this will represent, amen, the law, the, the Bible, the whole book of Deuteronomy as well as Leviticus. But in Deuteronomy 24 and 7, you'll find my subject. I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but the first uh, five words says, If a man be found. Amen. If a man, turn to your neighbor and say, If a man be found. Amen. Amen. As I put this together, amen, I want to take my time, amen, and establish my thought. If a man be found, man, we, we hear about judgment and judging others, especially when those that are of the household of faith declare something right and declare something wrong. Man, we hear people, whether they are convicted, whether they are guilty or not, say, I don't want to judge say, well, we shouldn't judge, or say, you shouldn't judge. And it leads us to wonder, what exactly are we to do? We raise our kids, we live ourselves in a manner that uh, we want to discern between right and wrong. So within us, there is a conflict between what we know to be right and what we see to be wrong. Man, it is the inherent conflict that exists within each and every one of us. Uh, when Adam and Eve finally ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they began to discern between what was right and what was wrong. And they immediately began to hide themselves. And in the same manner as children of Adam, and Eve, we also have that continual ability to discern between what is right and what is wrong. Amen. So when we look at judging, amen, we look at this word, we wonder why uh, people will say that we shouldn't judge or that I shouldn't judge or uh, uh, you should judge. So uh, what is judge? What is judgment? What, what is it? Uh, if you look at a definition, uh, it, it, the judge that it talks about in Matthew talks, uh, comes from the root word crino. It's a, uh, a word that means to determine, to condemn, uh, to go to the law, to call in question. Uh, it is to decree or to judge uh, upon something, an opinion, whether it is right or whether it is wrong. 
It is to discern between right and wrong. I know for a lot of people, um, the image of judge comes from uh, what we see on TV or what we have experienced in our lives and that of a person who sits higher than the rest of the room. Uh, his position is esteemed and the actual furniture layout of the judge's courtroom is actually the people's courtroom, but that lets you know uh, the perversion of the role. Uh, but you, you look at a judgment. We have declared as a people that we need people to set aside to judge between the interactions of me and my neighbor, or me and another person, entity. And so we have decided that uh, we would establish that there will be judges, that there will be people who interpret the law and pronounce a judgment based off the interpretation of the law. Now the law of our land is established by the will of the people. Right? Amen. And so the judge is hired by the people to interpret the will of the people. The judge in no way is allowed to, from his place of esteem, uh, declare a new law or declare a new order when the people have already established the order for themselves. And so in the secular mindset, uh, the judge, you walk into this courtroom, the people sit on the floor. The judge uh, sits up high. The lawyers are on the floor with the people, but the judge has to go up two or three steps to get to his perch. And so uh, the, the witness may go up one step, but not as high as the judge because the floor is theirs when they're speaking, but yet he is subject to the higher authority of the judge. And so the judge is set aside, amen, for the people. It is the people's courtrooms to establish the rule of law in the land, but yet we have twisted it so much that our lawyers and our judges are making hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, and we have esteemed them to be able to tell us what is right and wrong instead of interpreting what is right and wrong. And so in our minds in America, we have decided and in our communities, we have decided that these people are better than ourselves. And so the result of that is that they have declared law in places where law should not be established. And even so, they're starting to rewrite laws that people have written uh, concerning, amen, a lot of the issues that the church, amen, war, have warred against for years. And so the people have decided this will be the law, but the judges are declaring from the Supreme Court the mind of one is going to be more than the mind of the people. And so I think that this is going to be the case, and so this shall be what we shall do. And so we will allow this to take place because of the word of somebody who wasn't elected but appointed by a friend. Amen. So our idea of judges has become twisted. Amen. And so in our mindset, we try to apply that to scripture when we hear judge not lest you be judged. And so we get in our mindset, this is the ideal of one person placing himself above the remainder of the people, amen, to declare what I think is right. Yes, that may work with the Supreme Court, but it does not work with God. Amen. When the Bible talks about judge not lest you be judged, it is talking about the very act of being responsible, amen, for our actions. It is talking about the very act of being allowed to do, amen, what we want to do or whether we will bring ourselves under discipline to be able to follow what God has established. I'm talking about the church now. And that is a difference because when we look at judge not lest you be judged, we take that and don't look at the entirety. We don't look at the fact that he says, amen, you have a speck in your eye, a beam in your eye, you're trying to remove a, 
a speck out of somebody else's eye. It didn't tell you not to try to remove it, but it tells you to take care of that beam before you try to remove that speck. It is not telling you that judgment should not exist. So write that out of your mind. Write the perch man out of your mind and think about what God is meaning concerning judgment. He means not that you are better than anybody else and you can cast your eyes down, which has become the end. We have even performed the, the role of the perch man and saying we are better because I don't do that. I'm cleaner. No, you have something of yourself, amen, that is making you. I got so much I got to go through. Y'all help me today. Amen. That is making you uh, feel like that you are better, but you have something in you that makes you in need of forgiveness just as that person that commits homosexuality, just as that person, amen, that smokes and drinks. You lying. You're wearing your white and your chapel cloth. You might even roll fully in clothes, amen, but yet you're talking about your neighbor. That deserves just as much attention, amen, as somebody out here sleeping with the same sex. Exactly right. Yes, homosexuality is a sin of the day, just like Just Say No was about 20 to 30 years ago. Amen. There's some things that come to the limelight as a problem of the present day for the present church. And so we stand up and we speak out. We judge, amen, whether or not it is right or wrong. And so we have to understand that our judgment is not based on the fact that we're holy and you're not. Because you have to understand that the judgment of the church isn't meant to be upon the world. The judgment, let me say it again, the judgment of the church isn't meant to be upon the world. It's meant to be upon itself. Amen. If you know it, I thank God for you, but I'll get there in a minute. Man, why? Amen. We are on Facebook and we are on Twitter and we are on TV condemning the world and their sin when that is what they do. Amen. The judgment of what we are doing and what we should be judging is for the house of God. It's for the people of God. Somebody said, I don't believe that. We're supposed to judge everybody. No. We are supposed to judge the righteousness for ourselves. Amen. So that's why I read the scripture out of the book of Deuteronomy and I just read part of it. If a man be found. Why? Because we will place ourselves out of the world and we're going to even go back in time into the land of Israel and be able to understand exactly why God told them these things. If a man be found. Well, let's look at it in history. Amen. Y'all should be able to tell me that Israel, amen, was on the move out of Egypt and that God had given Moses the instructions of how to build the tabernacle and how to go through and, uh, and, and to discern right and wrong amongst the people. And if you read Deuteronomy and Leviticus, amen, if you read Leviticus, you would know that God established rule of order of how the people are to take care of alts between each other. He didn't say that you would never be done wrong because y'all say, folk. No. He said, but if, amen, a man be found doing such and such. I ain't got to be specific, but even the one I read it talks about he steal of his brethren and it makes some merchandise of him. That particular scripture even talks about who lays with who. Man with man, man with the woman, a man with his neighbor's woman, a man. All of that stuff was spelled out. And he said, he didn't say when they do it. He said, if a man be found. Why every word in the Bible is particular? Why would God say not knowing he, he knows that it is going to happen, but he said, if. Why would God say, if a man be found? Amen. You see, God realizes that there are some sins you would do, folk would never find out about it. There are some sins you do that you don't even know that you have done. You have said a lie and you don't even know it because you repeated something somebody else said. And so God says, if he be found. He's careful to know that if a person has been found, if this thing has come to light, if this thing has come to the attention of those that know better, amen, then you are to do 
these things. And so God is letting you know that you are a body of believers. You are the people of God. You are Israel, or today we are spiritual Israel. You are the people I have called out according to my name. You are the people I have called out according to my principles. And as such, I expect a better rule of order than the people that are around you. Now let's look at how, uh, the other situations surrounding the people of Israel. They were moving in to a land of heathen, according to them. They were moving into the land of the Canaanites. They were moving into the land of the people that didn't know God, and they did a lot of filthiness in the eyes of God. Yes, there is a difference between the holy and the profane. And God told his people in that book that to put a difference between clean and unclean, between the holy and the uh, profane. And so he knew that they were living in the midst of people. He did did give them the command that they should kill everyone that they come in contact with that are in the land that I'm giving you, but they didn't follow that order. And so it brought about a society in which they were intermingled with people that didn't believe like they believed, they didn't honor and worship like they worship, and they didn't have the same morality, amen, that the people of Israel had. God told them that you shouldn't wear this. God told them that you shouldn't lay this way. God told them that you shouldn't do this with your hands. God told them all these filthy and nasty things, amen, that these people around them were doing. But he said, you are mine, and this is what you shall. How many parents have told their children, I don't care what you, amen, I got a witness already. I don't care what those children do, you mine. Amen, I don't care what you, uh -huh. you go on ahead and do it, but you mine. When you come home, you got to deal with me. Well, God is the same way. He said, I care about what they're doing, but they're not mine right now. Right. Amen. You're mine. And so I'm telling you how you ought to conduct yourself. Right. Stuff you should do and stuff you should. I'm telling y'all, he is your father. And he's just telling you stuff to keep you yeah. safe and free from hurt, harm, and danger. So it's no different for the people of God than it is from you and your children. That God has some rules of the house, amen, that he was yeah. establishing in order to... to uh, cultivate a right relationship amen with him and so we find that if a man be found in sin amen if a man be found amen so that leads me to believe that there were people and as a group we were in this thing together we were the holy people of God we were the people of Israel and such uh, we had to keep an eye out for these things because these things uh, tore down our relationship with God and will put us on the right on the path to the wrath of God. And so I understood that what my neighbor did affected me. Amen. That's different from what we hear today. You take care of you. I take care of you. I'm with me. I'm going to do what I want to do. You do what you want to do. It ain't going to hurt nobody. Amen. Long as I don't hurt. Now the fact that you're doing it hurts me. See, that's not a Christian mindset. That is in the mindset of the people of God. Amen. That whatever I do don't matter with you as long as I don't hurt you. You don't know how it hurts me. Amen. When we're bound together as a group under the power and the auspices of God, amen, then what you do affect what I do. Amen. If you don't pull up your end of the bargain, then I can't get anywhere. Amen. If we're supposed to be pulling a log down the road and I'm the only one pulling and you pulling the other way, yes, it affects us because we're all bound together by our life. We share the earth. We share creation. Amen. We share this church. We share the kingdom of God. God. Amen. And if you're over there doing something that ain't holy, that tears down the kingdom of God, then I should judge between clean and unclean, between the holy and the profane. See, that doesn't align with the will of the world today because everybody wants to be isolated. They want to be together, but I want to be able to do what I want to do. Amen. We want to be together, but I want to be able to say what I want to say. We want to be together, but I can call a certain race a certain thing. We want to be together, but I can say this. This race is right and this race is not. I want to be together but I can keep all the kind of junk I want in my yard and it ain't going to affect you. No, it affects everybody. Right. Everything we do affects everybody. We have to realize that we're in this thing together. Yes. Amen. This isn't an individual life that we're living, but God created us communal That's creatures. Right. Nobody That's lives right. unto themselves. Amen. Folk got mad with the president when he told him you built that business and there was a road going to it. You didn't build that. 
and a certain political party took grab a hold of that and said the president didn't say you didn't build the business that you built. That's not what he said. He said you didn't build the road to your business. We all got in this together, put our money into it together, and now you got a paved road going right up to your business, right up to your house. And man, you can just turn on the faucet and you got water. You didn't pay for that or you didn't build that yourself. We got together and was able to build the infrastructure they made that allowed you to be able to enjoy that. But if you want to do it yourself, go on up in the hills and then dig your own well and do whatever you want to do. Amen. But somewhere along the line, we realized we were better together than we were apart. Amen. So when we look at judgment, we look at back in the old Bible, as we call it, the Old Testament, that they were concerned one to another. God said, whatever your neighbor does affects you. And even he said some stuff you had to kill the person that did it. Why? Because he was letting you know at that time there were some sins and some things that could come between you that we can take care of and it'll be okay. But their blasphemy against blasphemy against God in your midst, amen, is something that should be cut off and killed. Amen. And somebody said that was harsh that God would tell you to stone somebody in the olden days. But look at the danger therein within, amen, even the blasphemy of the people of Israel of the first generation caused them to not be able to enter into the promised land. Amen. And so a lot of things that you do, amen, will cause everybody, amen, to fear. We understand the role of bacteria and viruses today. Some sins of viruses. They are bad bacteria. Once you see it, you need to eradicate it and then isolate it, amen, and get rid of it before it affects everybody. Amen. There's some colds you can come in here and we'll say you ain't got no fever. Come on in with us. We ain't worried about it. Amen. But there are some flus and things you got. Don't come up in here because I don't want it. Amen. I pray to God for healing. Amen. But yet we realize we know how to take care of it. Amen. And we'll stay away. Amen. The Tucker, he'll stay back. Amen. All of us will stay home or do whatever because we know that we could be contagious. Well, spiritually, there are some flu-like yes. symptoms in the yes. things that we do, and when we start to see people spiritually cough, spiritually with a fever, they're running hotter than they normally do, they weak in their days, and they ain't even talking out of their head right No, We want to heal that and get rid of it, amen, before it spreads to everybody else. Amen. Now, how can we do that if we don't judge? Amen. Why is it some of the most important careers in the world pay the most money? but yet have the most corruption. Amen. A doctor is here to make sure sicknesses don't spread and make sure we heal. We pay the most money, but a lot of times they rip us off with $10 Tylenol pills. Amen. Lawyers are supposed to be our advocate when we are innocent, but we take advantage and say we're innocent when we know we're guilty. Amen. And then on the other hand, amen, they take advantage and charge us exorbitant rates to not even do half a job of defending us because they don't believe us. And yet, even the judge has put himself in a position of power to say this is what I feel and not this is what is right and wrong. Even the Bible tells us that when you come and you are placed in the seat of judgment, don't give credence to the poor for their poorness sake, amen, and don't give credence to anybody else because of any special, but judge straight down the line. But we can't find that, amen. We got the symbol of judgment where the woman is blind and she's holding the scales and weighing it in the balance, but yet the modern symbol is that she's peeking underneath her blind. Amen. You think she's blind, but the material she using, amen, she looking clean right at you. She's judging you by something that she shouldn't be judging you by, by your look, your character, where you come from. Amen. So we got to realize that judgment is something God told us to do and not something, amen, that you will say, well, that's the old Bible. We don't go by that. A lot of that stuff they told us not to do, we don't even make, a, don't even make sense today. Amen. But yet, the Bible and the old Bible is our school. It is something that teaches us, amen, just exactly in pure form what God, amen, wants from us. Yes. Amen, it teaches us, amen, in pure form just how God, amen, wants us to live. It doesn't 
give us any power, amen, to be able to perform that, but it just gives us the book and say, read it, amen, and it's up to us to know exactly what it is, amen, they put a stop sign out here, amen, I have to understand what that means, when they put the speed limit, I would have never known I couldn't go 70 until I saw that 35, amen, speed limit through there, amen, why? It gave me an understanding of this is what is expected of me, but yet, it didn't tell me to put on my brakes, it didn't tell me I was supposed to be able to take that speed limit 35 sign, process it through my mind, and have the discipline enough is where we go wrong, amen, to be able to say, let me slow down and back off and obey, amen, what they are expecting of me. And the same thing with God, amen, when he gives us these outlines in the old Bible of what we are to do and are not to do, when we steal, this is how to make it right. When we have leprosy, we ought to withdraw ourselves. When we do this to our neighbor, amen, this is how we make it good. If we don't know who did it, amen, then we'll do this. And God laid out so many situations that told us how to interact one with another, but yet he didn't give us power to be able to overcome that thing. So I may be able to go down the road and see that stoplight, amen, and then I may have the mindset that is green, uh, but yet I'm not going to just barrel through it, amen, not look and make sure nothing is coming. Why? Because I have the knowledge to go along with the mindset, amen, of what is right and what's wrong. I know what is good, I know what is bad, and so I have to process that thing to be able to understand. I just can't go right through here thinking I got the right of way and every intersection I got. I have to process information and be able to do what God expects. But 2 Timothy 3.16 says all scripture, everything in the old Bible, everything amen, that you learn is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness. This is the new Bible telling us, telling us that if you go back into the old Bible and read exactly what it says, it's going to tell you how, amen, to teach people to live. It's going to tell you how to correct people or how, let me put it this way, to judge. It's going to tell you how to judge between right and wrong. So we have to understand that judgment didn't leave with the new Bible. Judgment didn't leave, amen, when God decided, amen, to bring about grace. No, we still are to judge between right and wrong. And we have to live, amen, according to those things. Amen. And we still have to declare that homosexuality is wrong. Yes, it is. Amen. The world's going to do, the Canaanites, the spiritual Canaanites are going to do what they're going to do. But you as people of God, amen, and we as people of God have to know, amen, that the Lord says, if a man lies with another man as he lies with a woman, amen, he's going to be cut off. Amen. Right. Amen. We have to understand that, plain and simple. But yet, we want to rationalize ourselves out of this fine for the Canaanites, but it ain't good for Israel. Amen. Amen. Right. amen. Why? Because God didn't tell them to go, amen. Amen, and intermingle and try to convert the Canaanites. He told them to kill them. Amen. So God was telling you something back then. Now he's not telling us today to kill anybody that doesn't believe, but he's letting you know there's got to be a clean line of division between what you would do, amen, and what the people of the world would do. You can talk to them, work with them, and everything you want to do, but you got to understand that you work from a different mindset than the Canaanites. You work from a different mindset than the people, amen, that don't believe in God. We're trying to get instruction from people, amen, that don't believe into how we as believers should act. But you shouldn't measure your belief by unbelief. You shouldn't measure salvation by those who are condemned to death. Amen. You shouldn't measure the people of God and the actions of the people of God by what the world does. God told us to be separate. Yeah, we live in a generation where our music, we pull everything from the world, we pull our philosophy, we pull our technology, everything the world has, we pull it into the church and use it, but yet God tells us that there is an inherent difference between the people of Israel and the people of Canaan. There is an inherent difference in character and morality and life living from the people of Canaan than there is the people of Israel. We got to realize that the world we live in is more so like the nation of Israel in that day than it has ever been because we live in the midst of people with 
perverted mindset. Yes. And they want to be able to do what they want to do. We live in the midst of a people, amen, that have a mind to do things that are different. Amen. If we're going to talk about Daniel, we got to realize that we're Daniel. Daniel said, I don't want to eat the king's meat. I want to eat the diet that God told me to eat. Right. Amen. He could have very well easily got down on his knees and said, I'm going to do what you say do so I can be strong. This makes you strong? Okay, then I want to be strong like you. No, but Daniel trusted in what God told him yes. to do. Amen. And God made him higher than those of those that, all of those that was eating the king's meat. We got to realize we live in that society today. We don't own a nation that is underneath the power of God by his laws and his order. No, more and more America. I wish we would go back to the days of where, amen, folk were more saved than they were unsaved. And folk believed more than they were. But we got to realize where we are today. If we were starting the country today, amen, we wouldn't necessarily say or knew or know that it was started on Christian principles and by Christian men. Because we want to appease everybody. God didn't tell us to go into Canaan, amen, and making treaties with the Amalekites, the Canaanites, and the uh, Korahites, and all the ice and types, the Moabites, and the, he didn't tell us to go in there and learn their ways. No, he said, be ye separate, saith the Lord. So when we say something is wrong, we're doing it by the power of God and until somebody's mind changes, amen, we're not going to re reap a change in them. We're not going to get them to believe because they're operating mode is by sin and not by the word of God. And so we have to understand that it is those that we expect to change in in the household of faith. It's those that we expect to change in, amen, and those that believe. Yes, we tell you that amen, that you need to come on this side. That we serve the true and mighty God and the true and living God. And so we have to understand that that's who we serve. And we're trying to get yeah. folk to change their mind, to have their mind just like Christ. Amen to change their mind, amen, from who they are, amen, into a way they can think like Christ who wants them to think. But when they get on this side, amen, and then they're saved and sanctified, and we call them brother and sister, we have to have them, or we have to expect from them that they will live up, amen, to the standards that, that God has handed out. Then they are part of spiritual Israel, and so we are bound by the case that if a man be found, amen, and so we look at the book of Corinthians and what Paul was saying to the Corinthian church was that the Corinthian church was a cosmopolitan church. Amen. You'll see that word alongside Corinthian church all day. What that means is that they were like a melting pot, kind of like America, that it was a port it was a port city. So a lot of trade happened there. And so they picked up a lot of things from a lot of nations. The sailors, amen, would go and uh, have R&R &R there. They would go and hang out. So you can imagine if sailors had fun and Corinth, what was going on in the city. Well, in like manner, those things began to filter into the church, amen? And as such, there were people in the church that had, amen, some uh, uh, evil ways about them. And the church that Paul had to rebuke was the fact that they didn't speak up, amen, against those things, amen? It got to the fact, amen, that the son had been with his father's wife, amen? So it let you know, amen, it, it was probably the case that a son and stepmother, amen, was involved together. Together. And it was inside the church, amen. And the people of the church didn't even rebuke, didn't even reject, or didn't even say nothing against these two for what they had done. And so they had gotten to the point, you see, that they had become this melting pot and had seen so much of what other nations had and what they did that they had gotten to the point where they weren't even judging in their church. They weren't even standing up against what was right and wrong, amen. And as such, Paul had to speak out against the situation. And even so in 1 Corinthians 5, 11 through 13, Amen. In the Amplified, it says, I write unto you, do not associate with anyone who bears the name of a Christian brother if he is known to be guilty of immorality or greed or is an idolater. Amen. Is a person with a foul tongue, is a drunkard or a swindler or a robber. He says, you're not so much as to eat with such a person. He says that. He says that. Even in the modern day church, this Paul that people want to read Romans chapter 10 and say is grace and is just belief, this Paul was telling you that you aren't even to associate with a Christian brother, amen, who is known, amen, 
to be a part of these things. And so we get to the point where we just want to say, oh, just love them and all that. No, you got to set a difference between who you are and what they're doing. The minute you start to love and hug on all these people and then you start to see the proliferation or the continual building up of sin in your members. But no, we still have to put a difference between the clean and the unclean, between the holy and profane. That is the problem with the church today. We let everything go. And man, we don't rebuke anything. But yeah, it's all right. We're all in sin. No, we have to understand there has to be a difference between sin and cleanness. He said, uh, what business of mine is it and what right have I to judge outsiders? This is Paul. Amen. Is it not those inside the church upon whom you are to pass disciplinary judgment? Amen. God alone sits in judgment on those who are outside. Drive out the wicked one from among you. Amen. And so God, and Paul is telling you here, it is not our responsibility to go around here judging and condemning the world. Amen. But yet we are to sit here, amen, and be able to judge between the things in the church because God has put us in here together. Now somebody says, well, how can anybody judge? Because we're all in sin. Amen. That's why God gave us forgiveness. If we jump back into the old Bible and we look up and see, amen, Moses and Aaron, what did Aaron have to do before he even did anything? He had to cleanse himself. Yes. Amen. If he went into the temple, into the holy place, amen, uh, to be able to worship, amen, to be able to do anything, he had to offer up a sacrifice, a personal sacrifice for himself before, amen, he were to offer any sacrifice on behalf of the people, amen, of Israel. So what does that tell us? That tells us that God, amen, has to have an individual, or God has to have somebody that stands in the gap, amen, for his people. And so we look at Aaron back in that day, when he was ready to be able to minister on the behalf of the people, God required his cleanliness. God required him to come with him and approach him the right way, amen, with the ephod on, with the tunic on, and with all those clothing apparel, but he also had to slay, amen, an animal or a sacrifice for him and his family. If he approached God, amen, any other way, amen, and if he approached God and with filthiness of flesh, he would die on the spot. Amen. And so we have to understand that the people and the man of God has to approach God with a mindset of repentance. Amen. You go to church and you see some preachers walk up in the pulpit. Amen. They bow down on their knees and begin to pray. And I hope that they're praying that God cleanse me so that I can be able to minister to your people. Uh, we shouldn't just take it for granted that we're doing all right and we're clean and we say and sanctify? No. We ought to get to the point that even I like to do it even before I step into his place of service. Amen. That I will bow down to God and say I want to be clean so that I can minister unto your people. If I know I have sinned, I will name that sin. If I don't know, Lord, cleanse me from that as well so that I can be pure. So it wasn't that the fact that even the high, the high, the high priest was a, 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 a different from any one of us. He he was susceptible to being unclean. He was susceptible to sin. And as such, amen, he had to take care of it for himself. So he wasn't even to have the place of hierarchy like modern day judges. No, he was one of us working on the behalf of us. So we have to understand that when we judge, we don't judge from a standpoint that I'm holy and you're not. I don't belong in your presence. We judge from the standpoint that God wants us to get this right so that we can continue on in him. We're in this thing together. I'm not better than you. I can't look down my nose at you. No, I have cleansed myself and I'm trying to help you cleanse yourself up. Amen. We have to understand that these things are needful for us to be able to carry on as a people of God. We can't live in a modern day society amen where amen we just gonna look the other way when it comes to people doing wrong. 
I've told this story about the young man, amen, that dropped the church banner at my foot and walked off. And I had to correct him, amen, on the spot. Amen. Immediately my mind ran 50 different ways, and your mind does. I can't keep the birds from flying over my head, but I can keep them from resting in my hair. Amen. What about the mama? What about the dad? They gonna get they gonna know. Amen. We have to have a mindset that we're in this thing together. Amen. And that we need to be corrected. Amen. We don't know that parent could love you to death because you corrected them on the spot because they never would have known. Amen. We got to understand that all these things work together. Amen. To build a better community. We have communities now where folk were robbed and you sitting on the porch watching them rob and we won't call the police or nothing because we scared of who's robbing. We got communities now overran with drugs and man overran with all these abominable things because people have gotten scared to speak up and to declare what thus saith the Lord. We got people hanging on the corners from our house and we won't stand up and say anything. Amen. Big mamas, where are you at? Uh, that you will be able to declare what thus saith the Lord. We got children that we want to just love them and don't tell them what is right and wrong. You ain't got to disown them, but I still want to tell you that the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Where is the generation, amen, that will stand up and declare the word of God? No, we're just looking in the Bible for the next thing to make folk run and jump and shout and we don't want to give them the pure and holy word of God. We're looking at the Bible for something cute but we're not looking at something that pricks the heart of men and let them know we must live by the ordinance of God and not by our own mindset. Amen. We have to have the mind of God. We have to have the principles of God to be able to understand what God has for his people. We can't continue to live our life with the eyes closed. Amen. To the sin of our children and the sins of our neighbor. Yes, we can tell them what's right and wrong and they may not or may or may not do it. God is the judge. But when you are my brother and my sister, I should be able to tell you what's right and wrong without you catching a fit. Amen. I should be able to tell you amen and you should be able to tell me too. Ain't no need to be sitting there saying I can tell you I can't uh, be a person who's ready to dish it out but not able to receive it. Why? Because we're helpers one to another. In other words, iron that sharpened iron. And so we have to realize that if a man be found uh, in the midst of the congregation in sin, uh, we ought to tell them about it. If a man be found, uh, we ought to judge about it. Amen. If you see another church, uh, amen, you got the, uh, the pastor and the first gentleman. Uh, amen. Somebody ought to stand up quick, say that ain't holy and that ain't God. Uh, because the word doesn't agree with it. Uh, everybody doing a little bit of everything thing today. Hey, and folk are just going along with it. No, well, it's all right. God loves everybody. God don't love sin. Amen. He hates it. Uh, amen. And so we have to realize that we have to depart from it. Uh, we have to get out of it if we're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, so many things are filtering into the church world because we have adopted the things of the world into the church instead of reading the word uh, and understand what God says you can and cannot I do. God didn't tell us to get rid of the law, to destroy the law. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. Yeah. That means I came to provide an avenue whereby a man the law can be made manifest in your life. Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost and you read God's word and it tells you what to and to not do. Amen. Something on the inside ought to tell you I'm not living according to God's word. If I got to begin to explain myself out of doing what the word says, I need to back up and realize that maybe it just maybe I'm not doing what the word says do. Amen. How hard it is hard, but how hard is it to live a life amen after the word of God. Amen. Even the people of Israel couldn't live up to every precept, uh, but they were helpers one to another. Ah, eh? uh, they said Jesus is a God of love. He never got angry. Uh, I told you last week about angry. Hey, Amen. You be angry with knowledge, uh, but yes, God was very nice when He went into the temple uh, and turned over all the tables because they were selling uh, illegally. Hey, Amen. Why? Because He was angry with a godly angry. Eh? You can be angry, but make sure it's a godly angry. Ah, uh, uh, you ought to be tired of church.
churches, amen, standing by the side. Uh, and the folk that will get to speak up on behalf of the church uh, are the ones that don't want to follow after the word of God. Uh, you get some preacher up on TV, uh, and he's telling the church needs to accept, amen, homosexuals, no, whatever, no, amen, it ain't no acceptance in God. Uh, if your church does it, you ain't the church of God. Uh, I'm here to declare you ain't in the word of God. Uh, the church wants to tell you that you can drink and do whatever you want to, get out here and get drunk and all this stuff, uh, and you're still called of God. Uh, Bible even clearly tell you, I just read it, it said, get away from that person, uh, Amen. The church ripping folk off, uh, charging them for everything. They don't even have to charge folk for. Them. But yet, Amen. You sitting up here, Amen. You got the tides coming in, uh, and yet you taking up a collection plate for the light bulbs. Oh, the tides are for the light bulbs. God has given it to you for your portion. All right. Amen. Why? Because you need to stand up and declare and get yourself in order with the word of God. The church is to be taken care of by the tithe. The church ain't for the pastor to live rich. And he's taking 80% of the income and the church gets 20. No. Amen. There's got to be some right balance in the house of God. God even dealt with that too. And how much of a portion is for the priest. Amen. And how much is for the maintenance of the house of God. Somebody ought to stand up and declare. Claire Fowl, amen. I'll foul in the house of God. We got to judge these things. Stand up with your righteous mind. You can look at it and tell that ain't right. You can look at it and tell something wrong with that. Amen. You bringing in secular artists for praise and worship. That ain't right. You bringing in idolatry with food offered to idols into your church. That ain't right. They can stay on out there and make all the money they want to, but they can't come in here and praise God with filthy lips. If I got to get forgiveness to serve you. Amen. Do you need to get forgiveness? Amen. And cleanse it and accept it. Amen. What does a sinner have in the presence of God to be able to worship? You can't worship unless you have a relationship. And if you don't have a relationship, don't leave me in praise and worship. Because I ain't following. I go myself. Amen. We have to realize that you are to judge. Amen. If a man be found doing in these things, you need to mark that man. If a church be found doing these things. Uh, you ought to mark that church. Uh, uh, they got time for your money, but they got time to shake your hand. Uh, if a man be marked, if a man be found, if a church be found, uh, mark that church. Oh man, he's getting up in the choir on Sunday, uh, but he was dancing last night at the club. Uh, you know that ain't right. Your common sense will tell you that. Uh, amen. If a man be found, uh, you better mark that man. Ah, uh, uh, you looking at the preacher? He's sitting up there preaching on Sunday, uh, but you saw him with his arms around or somebody that want his wife on Monday. Uh, that ain't right. Uh, you need to mark that man. Uh, it's a time out for the church to sit back and act like we have no decision to make. Uh, it's time out for the church to sit back and act like we don't have any say. Uh, it's time out for letting the world dictate to us what's right and what's wrong. Uh, I don't care if they make a law to say they can do whatever. Uh, Canyon can do what it wants to do, but in this house, uh, that is the house God. Uh, we shall declare the word of God. Uh, we shall declare the works of God. Uh, amen. The world can pass a law saying everybody for everybody. Uh, do it like you want to do it. Uh, but yet even though I'm in Canaan, Canaan can't get in me. Uh, I got to keep myself holy unto God. Uh, how many know that holiness is still right and wave your hand? Uh, how many know that holiness is still right and walk in it? Uh, I may fall from time to time. Uh, God do that. Uh, he didn't expect you to be perfect. Uh, that's why he told you to kill a bull. Uh, that's why he told you to kill a ram or turtle dove or even offer up some flour. Uh, because he knew no matter what situation you find yourself in, uh, if you are rich, you can go ahead and put that bull up. Uh, but if you ain't got a dime to your name, go find some flour. Uh, hey, man, if you go out in the field, get some wheat and crush it up yourself. Uh, offer it up to the Lord. It's growing somewhere. Uh, why? Because God made provision for that too. He told his people, uh, when you go reap um, from your field, leave some for somebody else that has as fortunate as you. You think God didn't have his thing together uh, when he put his orders in place. Uh, amen. You gotta understand that God had it together. Uh, he's better than us. See, we want to bring it to the church. Uh, this whatever way you want to do it. Uh, and come as you are. Uh, uh, you can come as you are, but you're going to leave better. Uh, you can come as you are. We ain't worried about the dress. That's fine. Uh, but we're going to work on your heart. Uh, we're going to work on your mind. Uh, we're going to make sure you're not letting
lazy no more. Huh? We're going to make sure you're not a robber anymore. Huh? We're going to make sure you're not a fornicator anymore. Huh? We're going to make sure you're not a liar anymore. Huh? We're going to make sure you're not a hypocrite anymore. Huh? We're going to make sure we're going to make sure that you're not doing the things that God said not to do. Huh? Because that's the way of God. Huh? If you come in contact with his word, huh? you're going to be better. Huh? If you come in contact with his word, huh? you're going to change something. Huh? If you come in contact with his word, huh? that's the problem with the church today. Huh? Folk are going out to stuff to make them feel good. Huh? And we told them as long as they believe they're saved. Huh? And yet they come into the church and don't have any kind of change. Huh? They just come and dance and you say just come and you believe. And if you pray that prayer with me, come on up to the altar. Huh? And then we get on Facebook declaring we uh, saved a thousand souls. You ain't saved nobody. Huh? Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says if you don't have the spirit of God, huh? you're none of his. Huh? And John chapter 3 says you gotta be born of water huh? and you gotta be born of the spirit. Huh? We gotta understand that it's more than just waving your hand I pray that prayer. Huh? And then going back in the world doing the same thing. Huh? Oh, we had thousand confessions of two repentance. Huh? Yeah, they repented but it didn't change. Hallelujah. You gotta walk this thing every day. If you gonna be an Israelite, you gotta act like an Israelite. Huh? That's why God even took care of that team. Thank God for the word of God. He said if you or any stranger that dwells with you. Uh, do these things. Uh, amen. So he didn't leave you untouched. Uh, you can just come on in the side door. Uh, but you will follow this rule too. Uh, you can just come in some other way. Uh, but as long as you declare yourself to be a part of this. Uh, amen. You got to do it too. Uh, well, what's in there? Uh, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the word. Uh, and that's my final point. Uh, if I bring up the word of God. Uh, and it convicts your heart. Amen. Uh, if I bring up the word of God uh, and it speaks contrary to what you're doing uh, if I bring up the word of God uh, and it says thou shall not uh, and when you hear it it says I shall not continue to do what I'm doing uh, don't get mad at me uh, get mad at the word uh, and then get mad at yourself uh, yeah amen uh, then you gotta get to the point where you gotta make a decision uh, you gonna stay in here and try to get better uh, or you gonna go back out there and be a Canaanite uh, and for destruction uh, the land wants to spew you out huh, and get rid of you because huh, of your filthiness. Huh. Ah, that lets me know so I gotta quit. Huh. But that lets me know something else. Huh. Amen. Huh. That even the land huh, wants to serve God. Huh. That even yeah. the creation huh, wants to be right with God. It don't like the case huh, that it gets erosion every time it rains. Huh. It don't like, you think that don't hurt the land? Huh. When that erosion comes and it causes a river in the middle of your land. Huh. No, it hurts the Land, huh? You think it don't hurt the land? Huh? Hey Amen. When acid rain rains down, huh? you don't think it hurts the land? Huh? When fires rage across the land, huh? you don't think it hurts the land? Huh? When earthquakes break it apart, huh? would it hurt you if somebody cut you? Huh? When it cuts, it hurts the land too. Huh? And so it's moaning. Huh? Somebody said, "Where is that in the Bible?" Huh? Well, if you look at me in Romans chapter eight, huh? chapter number twenty-three, huh? it says the whole creation moaneth and groaneth. Yeah. Travail, huh? yeah. waiting for the, not waiting for the redemption huh? yeah. amen to wit the redemption of our body and the revelation of the sons of God huh? I know I didn't quote that right but y'all go look at it for yourself huh? yeah. amen but what it says huh? amen you can quote all you want to huh? but what does it say huh? what it says is huh? that even the land huh? amen was put amen under subjection of sin huh? amen man sin huh? because man was over the land huh? the effect happening to the land. Uh, the effect happening to the animals. Uh, amen. That old bull said, why in the world am I being sacrificed uh, for something old nuthead did? Uh, amen. Uh, you up there won't be obedient uh, and the bull got to pay for it. Uh, amen. The land. Uh, I'm soaking up blood. Uh, even God said between Cain and Abel. Uh, amen. The blood is crying out from the earth. Uh, that lets me know that the land feels it uh, and it doesn't want it. it it's crying out to God. Uh, Lord, blood has been shed. Lord, blood has been shed. You don't think that hurts the creation. No, but it wants to be right. But yet we just want to go on like nothing ain't never happened. Because we got a mind to say no. And because we got a mind, we don't care what God wants. But God, amen, wants holy people. God wants holiness and righteousness. He don't want shed blood no more. He don't want folk to die at all. Why do you think Jesus? 
Jesus wept. Amen. He don't want death. That's why he cast death and hell in. Amen. The lake of fire. Because it's an enemy of God. It would to him that we live forever. But he's not going to have us live forever. Amen. In sin. He's not going to have us live forever with death on our backs. Yeah. So it's up to you today that if a man be found doing any of these things, you need to judge. Amen. Make sure you get that beam out your eye, but don't forget to judge. Make sure you repent on yourself, but don't forget to judge. Make sure you take care of yourself day by day. Every time you pray, don't forget to ask God for forgiveness. But let there be a mind in you that I got to help my neighbor. Let there be a mind in you that I got to help my friend. Let there be a mind in you that I got to help my brother. Yeah, you can go to him personally and pray that he receive you. But if he don't receive you, bring a couple brothers or sisters with you. If he still don't receive you, take it up to the church. If he still don't receive you, God said let him go. What is he letting you know? He ain't an Israelite. He's a Canaanite. Let him go back to Canaan. This is for the Israelites. If a man be found 